There are many things you may have heard about Totnes in Devon. One of them is that if you live there long enough, as our poet laureate Matt Harvey says, that uh, your body starts to secrete a hormone called totnesterone, where your masculine and feminine come into perfect alignment with each other. But actually the thing that you don't know about the place is that we have, we are home to a super secret uh, time travel program. We've been working on it for years in a cellar deep beneath Totnes Castle and uh, uh, and it's very, very secret, so don't tell anybody, okay? We've been working on perfect, do come a bit closer by the way, I feel like you're all miles away and like the sound system might all start up in a minute and you won't be able to hear me anyway. So, um, so yeah, we've been working on developing disbelief suspenders, very powerful piece of technology and the cynicism overrider circuits are something really quite, uh, really something to behold. And uh, we've been very inspired by Afrofuturism and how they talk about time. That in the West, we talk about time as a linear process. We go past, present, future. Actually, in Afrofuturism, they say it's more like a wheel and we're in the middle. And from that, you can access different kinds of futures and different pasts from that place. It's inspired by Bell Hooks, who wrote what we cannot imagine cannot come into being. And by the great Sun Ra, who said, we've tried the possible and it failed. So now it's time to try the impossible. I always like it when Sun Ra gets a round of applause. Do you know, a little story about Sun Ra, he's an amazing jazz musician who said that he was an angel from Saturn and he wasn't human. And I wrote a, book, a blog about him once and someone sent in a comment and they said, yeah, we once invited him to play at our town in Wales and the rider that the band sent in advance, you know, which is normally, we want a bottle of Jack Daniels and blue M&Ms or something. The one for Sun Ra's band said, and you need to keep the kick six car parking spaces in front of the venue free so that his spaceship has somewhere to land <laughs> so it's true that at the moment the future looks like a very bleak and difficult and, and horrible place but in our time machine we've built it to explore different possible futures that aren't utopias aren't dystopias but are the future that resulted from us doing absolutely everything we could possibly have done during these next 10 years what would that be like we don't make the space the time to really allow ourselves to imagine that might be possible and while it's really important that in our movements we make space to explore the question of what if it's too late that we also don't shut the door on the question of well what if it isn't too late so I want to tell you a story here, a story of a recent journey that we took into 2030 in our time machine. You might like to think of me as the kind of Marco Polo of the climate movement, of the Phineas <laughs> Fogg coming back from an extraordinary adventure that I've been on with my friend into 2030. And I want to tell you how that was. The air smelt amazing. London smelt like the Alps in spring. It was just gorgeous. The bird song was so, so loud. The city had now so many more trees. And because of we realized in the summer of 2022 that above 38, 39 degrees, concrete and tarmac kills people. We had now taken it up in huge amounts in the streets that were looking so much greener. The UK had now passed 100% renewable energy, much of it in community ownership. We now export energy to other places who are a bit slower off the mark. And uh, getting to this point in history, those eight or nine years between now and then, no, seven, because my maths is shocking, it hadn't improved <laughs> even by then, was, has been the most exhilarating time in human history. What an amazing time it has been to live through. It's felt like we lived through a revolution uh, of the imagination. And the bicycle rush hour, my friends, the bicycle rush hours, I have no words to explain how extraordinary. You've never seen anything like them. The number of underground car parks that in 2023 we gave over to cars, we've taken back, they're filled with bicycles. When you now cycle into London, you don't see those signs that tell you how many car parking spaces there are uh, with the digital things. Those are for bicycles now because we realized that for every billion pounds we spend building a cycling infrastructure, we save 38 billion pounds off the National Health Bill. We're now so much healthier and better exercised. And in 2024, the banks, the worst of the speculative, most obnoxious banks, collapsed. 
and this time we didn't bail them out and they were bought in service of the Green New Deal and the Marshall Plan that we needed and many of their offices are now turned over to community businesses, to cooperatives. Citizens' assemblies are now used. It was beautiful. We went to visit some of them. Amazing people really engaging in democracy. That sense of deep deliberation and mature decision-making was just a thrill to see that actually happening. Every town, every city now has a civic imagination office. Beautiful. Where people come together and they reflect and they imagine and they dream and then they do it. Mariame Kaba, the great prison abolition activist back in the early 2020s, if any of you can remember back that far, she said, we must imagine while we build, always both. Schools have now become much more democratic, imaginative, artistic, the living embodiment of sustainability designed by the kids. Many of them now have a rainforest in the middle because that was one of the things the kids said that they really wanted to see in their schools. People in 2030, about 80% less meat than we did back in 2023 and the thing was nobody even really noticed it was made out like that would be some huge hardship for everybody it was just a shift and it happened and we're all better off as a result now 70% of the housing stock has been retrofitted it's fantastic all new buildings a passive house it's just beautiful to walk around homelessness uh, um, uh, energy poverty, fuel poverty really is a thing of the past you don't see any of that stuff anymore because back in, 20, in 2030 the right decisions are made to enable that people look back on 2023 in horror and shame and wonder what were they thinking back in 2023 Shell and BP went out of business in 2026 yeah! And we celebrated their passing with such fierce dancing. <laughs> People still talk about those parties that we had when that happened. And we know don't see any floods anymore in, 2020, in 2030 because we realize we developed the humility to recognize that beavers are much better hydrological engineers than we are. And the uplands were rewilded and reforested and given back to beavers. And the re-explosion of biodiversity has been amazing. Aviation had fallen, I hardly saw any planes at all. It was like that first lockdown. It was just amazing. Now, rather than fighting hard to stop new runways open, all of the big battles now, all the big conversation is about which ones do we close and in what order? We've already <laughs> shut two runways at Heathrow and turned them back into forests. We went to visit it. It's so beautiful. Public transport's now free, it was all amazing. And universities teach everything through the lens of the climate and ecological emergency. All the universities are surrounded by gardens. It's just amazing, you're gonna love it. <laughs> and Rishi Sunak finally had his climate change dark night of the soul in 2024 and dedicated all of his vast resources to fighting this battle as quickly as possible. And King Charles, and King Charles decided to donate all of, to rewild all of his land and put it into public ownership. And no one has heard anything from Jeremy Clarkson for seven years. The UK is now the most welcoming place in the world for displaced people. Policing has been transformed with restorative justice and funding goes into, more funding goes into supporting poorer communities than goes into policing them. We have a universal basic income, mental health has improved hugely and levels of anxiety are way, way, way down where they were before. And all those beautiful but burnt out, exhausted activists who fought so hard and unrelentingly for the world to get to get us to this place of positive change finally got to take a rest Yay! <laughs> because the direction of travel had started to change and because you were right <laughs> And in 2030, when we walk down those streets full of carnival and conversation and music, food growing, children playing, we now, by the way, in 2030, they use the number of children playing in the street as the key well-being indicator for how our cities are doing. It's hard for me to express how beautiful that world was. I get really emotional even just thinking about it. In early 2025, the UK and many other nations made reparations for slavery and colonization. International debts were canceled, loss and damage was paid. 
And we've seen a flourishing as a result of democracy and the building of low carbon economies around the world and huge investment in the education of women, which when we look back from 2030 turned out to be one of the key drivers of the shift that happened. So you might be wondering, why Rob? Do you need to wear a time traveler's suit to travel to 2030? Because it's not to protect me. We have to protect the people there because the thing that you really notice when you go to that 2030 is a fragile but very real sense of, do you know, I think we might just do this. So one of the rules of time traveling is that you can't do any past splaining. You can't <laughs> contaminate that process with your kind of 2023 sort of, yeah, right, like that's going to work. Because it's working and it's tangible and you can feel it. And it's one of the most uh, noticeable things about it is that, is that that's what's happening. So my sense is that while it's really important that we talk about collapse, we talk about extinction, we also have to express something beautiful and irresistible and delicious for people to run towards. The United Nations recently published a study where they said all chance of staying below one and a half degrees is now over unless we see a rapid transformation of society. So all the newspaper articles, all the magazine covers, all led with headlines, 1.5 is finished. I didn't see a single headline that said, let's have a rapid transformation of society, shall we? Wouldn't that be cool? It's not like it's working really well as it is now. So let's have a rapid transformation of society. Let's talk in every conversation we have about climate change, about what we long for. Yes, we need to talk about the science and what's happening, but I also want to hear what it is in that future that you long for. I long to live in a city where the rivers are so clean that people swim to work. I long to live in a city where the bird song drowns out the traffic. Walida Imarisha, in her book about Octavia Butler, uh, she said, all organizing is science fiction. I love that. All organizing is science fiction because this is about the stories that we tell and how those stories touch people as deeply as possible. So let's make our story one that nurtures and kindles a deep, deep longing for the future because it's longing that is going to make the shift that we need. So I need to go now because I've left the time machine uh, on double yellow lines <laughs> around the corner and you know what they're like in London. So sorry about that. But I'm just going to leave you with a quote from the poet Rilke, who said, the future must enter into you a long time before it happens. Which is so beautiful, I'm gonna say it again. The future must enter into you a long time before it happens. And as activists, never ever forget that, because that's what our activism needs to do, is to allow that future that I've been to and shared with you here today to enter into people. So, before I go, in Paris, in 1968, the students used to say, power to the imagination, imagination taking power. So, power to the imagination. Imagination taking power. Hardly hear you once more. Power to the imagination. Imagination taking power. Thank you very much.